Hi, my name's Andrew Poole from Home Theatre Engineering. Today we're going to talk about how to design a cinema room when you have two tower speakers and perhaps a centre speaker and you'd like to keep those. Ideally, if we're building a cinema, we would use an LCR arrangement where those three speakers are identical to start with. And we do that so that the timber is matched or the timbre is matched between those speakers. And where possible, we put them at the same height so that the, the tweeters at ear level. In this example here, and this is fairly classic, you know, it's what we see a lot of, the person who posted this picture on Facebook is trying to work out what they should do. So there are a few rules that we have to look at. First of all, we're going to talk briefly about the subwoofers. If you have stereo or tower speakers that have subwoofers built in, we have to work out whether they are actually going to be effective in the location that those speakers are going to end up at. Now here's the confusing thing, and just bear with me for a second. People will say to you, it doesn't matter where you put a subwoofer because you can't tell where it is, and that is true. However, it does matter where you put a subwoofer if you are trying to manage the, the base room modes. So the positioning of the speaker is critical for that. If you don't place the speakers in the right place, then you won't get nice smooth bass throughout the room. Of course, you need to calibrate them as well to get them working properly. But positioning is absolutely critical, but it's not critical in terms of us knowing where the sound comes from. So don't confuse the two. People are right when they say it doesn't matter in terms of being able to locate where the subwoofer is. It does matter in terms of working out how to manage the bass in the room. We spend a lot of time calculating out where to put our subwoofers. Um, and uh, we work very closely with the guidance of Floyd Toole in his book, Sound Reproduction. It's a real Bible, that's a go-to book to use. He recommends four subwoofers, and uh, the book explains very clearly why that's the case. So, if we can use the subwoofers in those two speakers, and they are in a good place for us managing the room modes, then that's absolutely fine. And we can use them, and we can make the most of them. If not, then what we need to do is perhaps disable them, and we roll off the sound that's delivered to those speakers at about 80 hertz, and we use subwoofers to manage the sound in that room. In fact, that's an interesting point about stereo speakers. It's one of the challenges of stereos, and it's why often people struggle to get sound in stereo rooms right. And that's because they have to have those speakers in a certain position, but in fact, it's not an ideal position for the subwoofers to be. And stereo purists can sometimes battle with that because they don't want subwoofers in their room, but the truth of the, the, the matter is that it's very hard to get really consistent bass management if you are not going to use subwoofers and you have to have your bass drivers or your subwoofers positioned exactly where your tweeters and your mid-range are. It doesn't always work and that's a conflict. Now, in terms of the mid-range and the tweeters, sound becomes more and more directional as the frequency increases. So, what we try to do is we try to get all of the tweeters uh, at head height. Right, so that we are consistently getting all of the clarity that we want from the audio. One of the things that I see incredibly often is you've got the left speaker and you've got the right speaker and then in the centre you've got the centre speaker and it's down in a cabinet on the ground. And the, the only person who gets to experience great sound in that room arguably is the dog. Well at least they get the centre channel but then they don't get the left and right because it's way over the top of them. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that the speakers are positioned as best we can with the tweeters at ear height. Now that can be difficult, so we have to work around that. In this situation, it's possible that the left and right towers might be too high. If they are, then we need to find a way to drop them down. Or, if we can't do that, we may even have to tilt them slightly so that the subwoofers are aimed, sorry, so that the tweeters are aimed at the ears. Right. Now, I'm not talking about toe-in and toe-out. That does need to be adjusted, but that's very dependent on seating position and the room and the speaker designs and everything else, and that's for a different video entirely. We're talking about the vertical alignment of your tweeters. Right. So the left and right speakers should have the tweeters at ear level, and that can be done by obviously raising or lowering the speakers or changing the angle of the speakers so they're aimed at the predominant listening positions. If you have... Um, a riser or two tiers of seats, then you have to compromise at some point. But I would suggest that the speakers need to be slightly higher 
so that then you can look down on the people as opposed to lower and beamed up because someone's going to miss out. If they're here and they hit these heads, then you're going to be blocking them from those heads behind you. Okay, if you come up, there's a chance that you can beam clear sound within reason to all seats. Now, bearing in mind that the beam spread of the high frequency is not as broad as it is at the lower frequencies. So you have to work harder to create a better sweet spot. And that's something that the HRA, the Home Acoustic Alliance, works on very hard. Okay, so you've got your center, sorry, your left and right sorted out. You've got the height changed and you've got the tweeters pointed at the predominant seating positions. What about the center? Well, we may struggle to lift the center up, especially if we've got a television or a non-acoustically transparent screen. So in this situation, what can we do? Well, first of all, if you've got your speaker in a cabinet, please bring it right to the front, all right? And if you can, fill the cabinet with acoustic material, with sound absorbing material. Because what happens is the sound that's propagated by that speaker resonates and echoes around inside the box and then comes out of the box and then mixes up with the sound and distorts it and makes it much, much harder to hear. So bring it right to the edge or the front of your cabinet as far as you can and then as I said, pad it up. Now the next thing is, if that's way down at your feet, you can't possibly lift it up. So what you need to do is build a nice wedge out of some sort of material, whether it's wood or rubber or foam, and then tilt your speaker up so it's now aimed, again, at the predominant listening positions. So now, at least virtually, it's possible that your left and right speakers might be a bit high, but they're aimed down, and your center speaker's a bit low, but it's aimed up. And hopefully, all of that sound from the higher frequencies is arriving, and it perceives, at least to our ear, to be coming a little bit more from an even height. Now, there is a way, in fact, that you can get your center speaker with a television or with a um, non-acoustically transparent screen to actually sound like it's coming from the dense center of the screen. But that's for another video, and I'll produce that later on. Um, that'll be a while in coming. And it'll be part of, um, part of the masterclass, which will eventually be compiled. So the next thing is, our speakers are positioned in the room, and often, like here, they're hard up against the wall. And this is a problem as well. What you can see here is the frequency response of a monitor that's been placed up against a wall. And the squiggly lines that you can see on one side, the peaks and valleys, these are um, speaker boundary interference response. This is where the sound has propagated from the speaker, hit the wall behind, and has come forward, and the compressions and rarefactions of that sound are interfering with the sound moving forward. There's only a few ways to solve this, and one of them is to move the speakers at least a meter forward from the wall. Now, what I call the spouse acceptance factor may not allow for that. You know, sometimes it's not very popular to move speakers right into the middle of the room, or at least a long way forward. It does wonders for the sound, but it doesn't always do a lot for the aesthetics of the room. So your option then is to only put uh, acoustic material as best you can for as large an area as you can behind the left, center, and right speakers. Now, a very quick tip on that one. Probably the best material to use is compressed fiberglass. Mount it in a frame, cover it with some fabric, have an air gap behind it, and place those behind the speakers. Try and color match them with your room. It's not expensive to do, and it will dramatically improve your sound, especially if you can't pull those speakers forward, because it's going to absorb those sounds that are hitting the back wall. Okay. Another way to manage that is a baffle wall, but Given that we're talking about stereo towers here, or tower speakers at least, that's not you know, really a viable solution. Okay, so in summary here, please make sure that all your tweeters are at ear level, or if they can't be at ear level, or at least aimed at ear level in the vertical plane, and make sure that you've got your speakers either as far forward from the wall as you possibly can, at least a meter is good, at least a meter, and then if you can't do that, you need acoustic absorbing material behind it. Finally, there is absolutely nothing wrong 
and though you may not like it because you've probably spent a lot of money on these speakers, there's nothing wrong with having an acoustically transparent screen and either placing your left and right outside of the screen if that falls within the screen width specifications or behind the screen and then you can place your centre speaker up in exactly the right position on a shelf behind the screen but you do need to remember that if you're going to use an acoustically transparent screen especially a perforated one that you need at least 30 centimetres or about a foot between the speaker and the screen itself otherwise again you set up this interference pattern and it won't sound really good. Okay, so there are advantages and disadvantages to everything you do. Um, now I know you won't see your speakers if they're behind the screen, but it is a way to get really great imaging. It's a way to get the best out of your speakers. Um, and you know, you'll get a result that's really pleasing. If you want to leave your speakers inside the room, well then providing it's not going to be too wide, you can place them left and right of the screen, and then you can place your center behind the screen and you get a similar result. But the beauty of that is you get to lift your center speaker up. So look, I hope this has helped. Um, if I've missed out any questions, please comment below and I'll try to answer them. Um, please subscribe and ring the bell and we will try to bring you as many videos as we can that are gonna help you in future with the design of your home theater room. Thanks for joining us.